I just did. Do you guys? Can you guys? Can you guys hear the music through that? Did it work or no? I, I hope it worked. So. Uh, it was working. Well, welcome. Yeah. Welcome back, everybody. Um, happy to be back. We took a week off um, as as we needed to to make sure that uh, the the women in our lives were taken care of. Yes, uh, indeed. And, uh, uh, so that was good. Hopefully, everybody had a happy Mother's Day. And uh, and also, hopefully, you all got to somewhat enjoy the live event. I know we <laughs> we struggled a bit trying to make that work. We've got plans to make it better next time. <laughs> we but, we uh, it taught us some lessons. We uh, we learned a thing or two. Man, it's complicated. It's just complicated. <laughs> no, yeah, I'll have to check that out. Yeah, uh, bummer. The music's the best part of our show. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, no, he, he's not lying. Quite <gasps> it is. It's like the music, uh, and then just skip ahead to the end credits because it's usually yeah, yeah pretty rad. So, Think of all the time you'll save. Oh man. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I may do that tonight. Let's just see. Let's see how it goes. Let's see if it. Yeah. Just, see if we can just, just jump straight to the silently end of the movie. vanish out of frame. <laughs> And then and then he'll be back. Um, so tonight tonight is uh, was recommended by by uh, the man over here. Hey, good job. Two, two over there. Uh, the the day the earth stood still. I have not seen it, but uh, Josh said it's amazing. So I saw it as a, as a child. Uh, it's one of my father's favorite uh, favorite movies, and uh, he is has joined us tonight. So uh, we've we've got a we got a mother, yes, which, we got a, a mother and a father from separate parts of the family. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's true. Um, so yeah, that's fun, and uh, we'll we'll look for the for the witty commentary uh, coming in coming in on chat from you guys. Um, Always killing it. So that'll be good. We do want to preface this by saying this is not necessarily a B movie. No. So. I always take flack when I put up a social media post of any movie that someone considers not a B-movie, and then they say, but your name is B-movie Bonfire, and I'm like, it's like Burger King. They sell things other than burgers. This is, <laughs> We're the know, chicken you sandwich fries. of You movies. can get a chicken sandwich. Yes, our, our, our menu options are constrained <laughs> only by copyright law. So, uh, yes. you know. And it still gets us, even when it's public domain. So, yeah. uh, But we're looking forward to that, and then... Um, Wanted to mention you guys too tonight. Uh, last week at the live event, we all signed two weeks the ago. Old sw- two weeks ago. Two, two, weeks two weeks ago. ago. We signed the swaggity hat. There it is. And uh, so we're going to give that away tonight at the end of the stream to anybody yep. who is currently subscribed. So right now I've got seven or eight folks that I've got their name in the hat to give away the hat. And uh, anybody else who subscribes from now until the end of the stream, we will add you into the hat as well, and then we will do it live. Where you'll get to see the results yeah. in real time. So, you know, there there is one coming. thing uh, that I do want to mention about mm. that is I really feel like uh, that we need to to richen this pot. Let's let's give some more folks uh, a chance at uh, this hat tonight. What do you what do you guys say? Oh, right on. Yeah. Hey, look at that. Nice, nice. Well, there we go. Heard that up there. Okay. So who all? Let's see here. Art Splunge. Luke Viper got a sub. KJMB got a sub. PF Janky got a sub. Sahara nine zero two one zero, and Art Splunge. Art Splunge. <laughs> art Splunge or Art Splunge? I'm gonna say Splunge. I like it either way. Splunge. Yeah. All right. I'm gonna add those some of those folks into the drawing. Yeah. Cheers out there. Good people in chat, and uh, cheers to you. So, uh, yeah, should awesome, we get dude. should we get rolling? I think we should probably get rolling. I th- I th- think we should. Uh, so yeah, uh, see you guys on the other side. Let's have some fun. Yeah, exciting. Oh, it's gonna be yeah, it's pure excitement. Bacon in space. Even space is like, we get it, you vape. Edmund, head north. 
A story by Harry Bates. He later wrote about his motel. Addison, he, her. I love the movies that have Ben Nye as the makeup artist. Ben Nye, the makeup guy. Ben, ben, ben. I, I had Ben Nye makeup all the time, so it's cool. <laughs> when I was a stage actor. <laughs> yeah, I think he would have been more wise to direct something else. Theater Nerds Unite. Thank you, Loot Viper. <laughs> Holy smack. Call headquarters. Get the lieutenant. Holy Christmas! That thing's doing about 4,000. But that's incredible, sir. B-34. That can't be aircraft. Must be Miss. a bomb bomb. Dang it. This is Lieutenant Ferris of Charlie Baker. I have a bogey at two zero zero thousand feet. Sir, this is a Domino's. I thought he was doing a Porky Pig impression for a second. <laughs> 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 Man, everybody always listening to their boom boxes in public. From all over the world. Government has not yet issued any statement, but there seems to be no question that there actually is a large unidentified object circling the Earth at incredible speed. It's your mom. This is Elmer Davis again. We still don't know what it is or where it comes from, but there's something there. That makes us hate it. tracked around the Earth by radar. <laughs> we should shoot traveling it. Traveling at a rate of 4,000 miles an hour. This is not another flying saucer scare. Scientists and military men are already agreed on that. Military Whatever women are on the side. Something real. <laughs> we interrupt this program to give you a bulletin just received from one of our naval units at sea. A large object. <laughs> there's a lot of there's a lot of lint in here. Over the North Atlantic, toward the east coast of the United States. Opposed to one of our it's naval units in the desert. Speaking, here in the nation's capital, there is anxiety and concern, but no outward sign of panic. As a matter of fact, there are signs of normalcy. <laughs> The beautiful spring weather, the tourist crowds around the public monuments and other buildings. We're keeping all the panic inside. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. oh my god. <laughs> Is that a Washington Monument dick joke? <laughs> you got to get your marble columns. <laughs> J.J. Abrams directed this film. <laughs> nah, it's not blue. <laughs> Come on, kitty, chase the laser. Welcome our new alien overlords. Oh, I really wanted it to blow up the Washington Monument. I'm probably on a list now. <laughs> this movie also brought to you by Jiffy Pop. Popcorn so good, you'll freak. <laughs> that was a great landing. I need to find a bathroom. Oh, all the cops are coming. We don't understand what it is. Bring the tanks.
Ooh. Oh, nice. Tank Tokyo Drift. <laughs> U.S. Army, Tanky O Drift. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for acknowledging it. <laughs> Beat it. I'm sorry, but you have to interrupt him. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. This is Drew Pearson. We bring you this special radio television broadcast in order to give you the very latest information on an amazing phenomenon. The arrival of a space ship in Washington. You'll see in the background where we're, we're filming this movie. are concerned by reports of panic in several large eastern cities. I am authorized to assure you that so far there is no reasonable cause for alarm. Well, I'm glad that you can reasonably do that. Mass destruction are based on hysteria and are absolutely false. I repeat, these rumors are absolutely false. The ship, designed for travel outside the Earth's atmosphere, landed in Washington today at 3.47 p.m., Eastern Standard Time. We still do not know where it came from. The ship is now resting where, exactly we'll where it landed two hours ago, and so far there is no sign of life from inside it. Troops have been rushed across the Potomac River from Fort Myer and have thrown a cordon around the ship. They are supported by tanks, artillery, and machine guns. Behind the police they lines, there is a huge crowd of curiosity seekers. The Army has taken every precaution. To meet any emergency which may develop. In here? <laughs> every eye, to think of every joke. weapon <laughs> is trained on the ship. That's the it's best It's been that way for two hours. And the tension is just beginning. Just a minute, ladies and gentlemen. I think something is happening. It'd be sure great if something would. They love the slow ramp. <laughs> <laughs> they really, really get the third dicks hard. <laughs> <coughs> Too fast. <laughs> This Peace among fun. worlds. <laughs> it's bigger on the inside. Oh, wait a minute. Do I hear a beat dropping somewhere? from another planet to get lucky. <laughs> Let me just whip this out here. Called the Penetrator 4000. Ooh. Oh! Ow! Ow! You shot me, you a whore! I'm just badly burned! Thank oh, you. You're not gonna like this. <laughs> <laughs> of 
board says hard no. <laughs> oh, you know, I just... That's actually pretty impressive. That's pretty, pretty good. How can you shoot at the same time? That's my question. I, I'm not gonna lie. I'm already impressed. Going back to sleep. Quick, everybody, gather back around. Like, now they're cool with him? Oh, it's all limp now. It was a <laughs> gift for your president. With this, he could have studied life on the other planets. <laughs> Good thing they speak English. Get that ambulance over here. Take him to Walter Reed Hospital right away. Yes, sir. If he'd landed in France or something, they'd have been screwed. <laughs> yeah, Darryl, we... Right in there, Mr. Holly. Don't follow me into the bathroom, okay? I have a shy bladder. My name is Harley, secretary to the president. I've been told you speak our language. Now that your name is Mr. Klaatu? Just Klaatu. The president asked me to convey his deepest apologies for what has happened. Sit down, Mr. Harley. Thank you. I'm sure I, I need hardly point out that your arrival was something of a surprise. Had you been traveling long? For about five months, your months. You must have come a long way. About 250 million of your miles. <laughs> Not my miles, your miles. Naturally, we are very We call them kilometers. You <laughs> from another planet. Let's just say that we're neighbors. It's rather difficult for us to think of another planet as a neighbor. I'm afraid in the present situation, you'll have to learn to think that way. The present situation? I mean the reason for my coming here. We're very curious about that, too. Would you care to talk about it? I'd be glad to. Not now, of course, with you alone. Or perhaps you'd rather discuss it personally with the president. This is not a personal matter, Mr. Harley. It concerns all the people on your planet. I... I'm not sure I understand. I want to meet with representatives from all the nations of the Earth. I'm afraid that would be a little awkward. It's completely without precedent. And there are practical considerations. The time involved, the, uh, the enormous distances. I travel 250 million miles. <laughs> Figure I it out. I appreciate that, but... <laughs> I want Look, to you came all the way here, so can you just I mean, bring people over to your house? Uh, That's all I'm asking for. Our world, at the moment, is full of tensions and, uh, and suspicions. In the present international situation, such a meeting would be quite impossible. What about your United Nations? You know about the United Nations? We've been monitoring your radio broadcast for a good many years. That's how we learned your languages. I'm sure you, you recognize... And how we also know you're having that. an affair with your secretary. The evil forces that have produced the trouble in our world. Also, sure radio you does does tell us Mr. More. Harley, with the internal affairs of your planet. My mission here is not to solve your petty squabbles. It concerns the existence of every last creature on Earth. Well, perhaps if, if you could explain a little. I intend to explain to all the nations at the same time. How do we proceed, Mr. Harley? Well, you kickstart it and then you start to rev. We, uh, we could call a special meeting of the General Assembly, but of course the United Nations doesn't represent all the nations. Then I suggest a meeting of all the chiefs of state. Believe me, you don't understand. They wouldn't sit down at the same table. I don't want to resort to threats, Mr. Harley. I merely tell you that the future of your planet is at stake. I urge that you transmit that message to the nations of the Earth. Because I don't want to say it twice, okay? 
I will make that recommendation to the president. Of the world. But I must tell you in all honesty, Earth I'm president extremely Nixon. dubious about the results. Apparently, I'm not as cynical about Earth's people as you are. I've been dealing in Earth's politics a good deal longer than you have. Good night, sir. Arr! Klaatu is you talk spelled backwards. That's, uh, it is now 2 a.m. The giant robot still mic. hasn't moved. Engineers from nearby Fort Belvoir have failed to budge him. And metallurgical experts have found his huge body impregnable. They're now concentrating on the <laughs> they're ship. Just they're they're going to keep, they're gonna no keep trying. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so he's into toys. Have you tried rubbing him the right way? Why is he any place, pants? Sergeant? Oh, no, sir. That was a Britney Spears Just reference. Just please be, sir. I saw the ramp from through the side of the ship right here. Now I can't even find a crack. Oh, Carlson, what's the report? These camels are smooth and delicious. We've tried everything from a blowtorch to a diamond drill. Have you tried him? peeing on it? Made out of the same stuff. Has he moved, Sergeant? No, sir, not an inch. This is the toughest material I ever saw, General. For hardness and strength, it's out of this world. <laughs> I can tell you officially that's where it came from. Dumbass. The skeletal structure is completely normal. The tests show the same for the major organs. The heart, liver, spleen, kidneys. Yeah, and the lungs are the same as ours. That must be How a convenient. atmosphere. Similar pressure. How old do you think he is? Oh, I'd say 35, 38. <laughs> Told me this morning while I was examining him. He's 78. Oh, I don't believe it. Life expectancy is 130. Well, how does he explain that? Says their medicine is that much more advanced. Camel? He was very nice about it, but he made me feel like a third class... Two out of two doctor. doctors prefer the taste of camels. <laughs> I don't know why our life expectancy sucks. Doctor, doctor. What about it? Doctor. I just examined the wound and it's completely healed. Well, what does he say about it? Said he that he's the Wolverine. Some stuff he had with him. What are you going to do with it? Take it downstairs and have it analyzed. And I don't know whether to just get drunk or give up the practice of medicine. Or maybe just throw Why not both? <laughs> Afternoon, Mr. Harley. Good afternoon, Does gentlemen. nobody knock? <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm glad to see you up and around. Thank you. Have you any news? Pierce Not Brosnan, good news, his first I'm role. Afraid. The president accepted your suggestion. Or is that Christian Dale? Invitations for a meeting. Yes. <laughs> Let me read you some of the replies. The premier wishes to inform the government of the United States that it'll be impossible for him to attend the meeting suggested by the president unless the meeting is held in Moscow. The suggestion of the president regarding the possibility of a meeting in Moscow would be unacceptable to his majesty's government at the present time. Representation could be sent only if the meeting were held in Washington. Well, there you have it. Now that you understand the situation more clearly, perhaps you'd like to discuss it with the president. I will not speak with any one nation or group of nations. I don't intend to add my contribution to your childish jealousies and suspicions. Our problems are very complex, Klaatu. You mustn't judge us too harshly. I can judge only by what I see. Your impatience is quite understandable. I'm impatient with stupidity. I my like this guy. people have learned to live without it. I'm afraid my people haven't. I am very sorry. I wish it were otherwise. All right, gonna have to get Gort to go F some stuff up. Before making any decisions. General Tarkin? I think I should get out among your people. And become familiar with the basis for these strange, unreasoning attitudes. Under the circumstances, I'm afraid that's impossible. Oh, I must ask that you don't attempt to leave the hospital. Our military people have insisted on this. 
I'm sure you understand. Our military people. They weren't sure who to blame it on, so they just said our military people. This will hold them. Named Officer of the Day. I'm not getting anything out of you here. It's because I'm muted. It's like my weekly Zoom calls on the virgin. <laughs> His large monster just stays elsewhere. The public is advised to take ordinary precautions and to remain calm as we await further officials have come to the inescapable conclusion that this ship and its occupants come from some other planet. Thus far, scientists have refused to speak officially on just... I'm thinking the police need to just start indiscriminately shooting at white guys. They seem to agree, however, that either Venus or Major Mars is the Carpenter. most likely possibility. Not only are these the closest planets to Earth, but all research to date indicates that they are the only two planets capable of sustaining life as we know it. However, all reputable scientists warn against jumping... Who has a lit-up room for rent sign? Professor Them. Fattermeyer of MIT, for example, points out that it's entirely possible in light of our meager Lick knowledge. The president has urged all citizens to be on the alert <laughs> for any information about this man and to transmit such information this immediately TV is to in the police, ultra high the Army, or the FBI. While the president made no effort to minimize the crisis, he urged people all over the country Did they not manage to, to take a photo of the guy? <laughs> and I might add that though this man may be our bitter enemy, he could be also a newfound friend. Unfortunately, for identification purposes, the only photographs Mommy, we have hey. are similar to this one hey, and do not show that? the man's face. The president said the entire facilities of the FBI and every other federal agency are being brought to bear. Pointed out, however, that this is no ordinary manhunt. He warned, "We may be up against powers that are beyond our control." He's Bill Brasky. How about we turn on a light? There we go. Hey, that's way less creepy now. What is it you want? My name is Carpenter. I'm looking for a room. Oh, I see. Are you an FBI man? No, I'm afraid not. I bet he is, Mom. I bet he's looking for the spaceman. I think we've all been hearing too much about spacemen. Oh, this is Mrs. Benson, Mr. Carpenter. Let me just and introduce you to everyone. Mr. Bobby, Mr. and Mrs. Barley, and Mr. Carl. How do you do? Hi, Mrs. Crockett. There will be a test later. I have a very nice room <laughs> on the second floor. It has two large windows and gets the sun all day long. Hey, mister, can I help you look for the spaceman? I know just what he looks like. He's got a big square head with three great big eyes. That's enough, Bobby. It's late. Come on. Excuse me. We mustn't annoy Mr. Carpenter. He won't want to stay here. <laughs> He's really a dear little boy and quiet as a mouse. <laughs> I'm calling bullshit on that. <laughs> How did you know? Well, I can tell a New England accent a mile away. <laughs> now we take you to Miami Beach, Florida, for a report from Gabriel Heater. Mr. Heater. And now on this Sunday morning, we ask the questions a little tough. that have been haunting the entire nation for two whole days. This creature, where is he? What is he up to? If he can build a spaceship that can fly to Earth, and a robot that can destroy our tanks and guns. 
What other terrors can he unleash at will? He's boning your women. Obviously, <laughs> the monster must be found. He must be tracked down like a wild animal. He must be destroyed. But where would such a creature hide? Would he disappear into the North Woods? Would he crawl into the sewers of some great city? Everybody agrees there is grave danger. The question remains, what can we do to protect ourselves? What measures can we take to neutralize this menace from another world? This has been a Fox News report. Of course, but how? And if we do destroy it, what do we face in retaliation? George, would you turn that radio off? I'm trying to concentrate. Why doesn't the government do something? That's what I'd like to know. What can they do? They're only people, just like us. People my foot. They're Democrats. (laughs) (laughs) Not to give you the shakes. He's got that robot standing there, eight feet tall, just waiting for orders to destroy us. Spaceman, or whatever he is. We automatically assume he's a menace. Maybe he isn't at all. And what's he hiding for? Why doesn't he come out in the open? <laughs> yeah, like that heater fellow says. What's he up to? I mean, you shot him afraid. once already. He's afraid. <laughs> <laughs> well, after all, he was shot the minute he landed here. See? Words of wisdom. I was just wondering what I would do. Or perhaps before deciding on a course of action, you'd want to know more about the people here. To orient yourself in a strange environment. There's nothing strange about Washington, Mr. Carpenter. A person from another planet might disagree with you. Well, if you want my opinion, he comes from right here on Earth. And you know where I mean. <laughs> they wouldn't come Downstairs. They'd come in airplanes. I wouldn't be too sure about that. Stands to reason that fellow wants something, otherwise he wouldn't be here. Is that right, Mr. Carpenter? I must admit I'm a little confused. Oh, Mrs. Benson, Mr. Stevens is here to see you. Oh, thank you. Excuse me. George, finish your coffee. I promised the Carsons I'd be there at 11. Good morning. Good morning. We're all set. I foresee a love triangle. The car, and the radio's still on the blink, so we can forget about the spaceman for today. Well, there's only one thing. I haven't anyone to stay with Bobby. I don't suppose we could take him with us. Damn it, Bobby. Well, <laughs> well there's always someone here, but today, of course, well, they want to talk about his propane and propane accessories. I'd be happy to spend the day with him, if you'd let me. Say, that would be great. Sure. Wouldn't it? <laughs> Strange man. It's awfully nice of you to suggest it. Oh, I'm sorry, Mr. Carpenter. This is Tom Stevens. How do you do, Mr. Carpenter? Hello. Bobby That's and I a had limp a ass handshake, sir. Afternoon. We talked and listened to the radio. I thought today you might like to show me around the city. Well. Suppose I ask Bobby how he feels about it. Right. You think it's all right? Sure. <laughs> he said he's got candy. It's cool. Man, ding dang old Gord, man. He's just a pew pew pew. And go, go away, man. It's real, real fine. That's my father. He was killed at Anzio. How convenient to the plot. So, what you're saying is your mom's single. Did all those people die in wars? Most of them. Didn't you ever hear of the Arlington Cemetery? No, I'm afraid not. You don't seem to know much about anything, do you, Mr. Carpenter? <laughs> You're Jesus. a dumbass, is what he's saying. <laughs> I've been away a long time. Very far away. Is it different where you've been? Don't they have places like this? Well, they have cemeteries, but not like this one. You see, they don't have any wars. Gee, that's a good idea. <laughs> Why didn't we think of that? <laughs> what would you like to do this afternoon? Go to the movies. Let's not go right. commit war crimes. Go will you? No fooling. And Bobby, tell me, do you have to have money to go there? I've got two dollars. Mom gave it to me. No, I want to take you to the movie. Do you think they'd accept these? Did... Gee, they look like diamonds. Well, in some places, those are what people use for money. They're easier to carry and they don't wear out. I'll bet they're worth a million dollars. Would you give me your two dollars for two of these? Uh, yeah. well, yes. Sure. Okay. <laughs> Let's not say anything to Mom about this, though, huh? <laughs> Why not <laughs> hustle on the spaceman? She doesn't like me to steal from people. You 
Your mom sounds like a real square, Billy. <laughs> <laughs> Say, I've got some candy in my van. Let's go get tattoos. Who's this person, and why is he so giant? Does he shoot lasers? Those are great words. He must have been a great man. Well, sure. So what went wrong? <laughs> he got a splitting headache one night. Boy, That's the kind of man I like to talk to. <laughs> Bobby, who's the greatest man in America today? Well, I don't know. Spaceman, I guess. No, I was speaking of Earthmen. I meant the greatest philosopher, the greatest thinker. Well, you mean the smartest man in the whole world. Yes, that would do nicely. Professor Barnhart, I guess. He's the greatest scientist in the whole world. He lives right here in Washington, doesn't he? Right near where my mom works. Oh, where's that? Department of Commerce. She's a secretary. That man they call a secretary isn't at all. My mom's a real secretary. Mr. Carpenter, now can we go see the spaceship? If you like. Returns to the scene of the crime. Now remember, the tip of it's sensitive. <laughs> I bet that iron guy's strong. I bet he can knock down a whole building. I shouldn't be at all surprised. I'd like to get inside that ship, see how it works. Let's go. What do you think makes it go? Well, uh, a highly the developed tears form of, of children. atomic power, I should imagine. I thought that was only for bombs. No. No, it's for lots of other things, too. You think it can go faster than the F-86? Yes, I should think so. About a thousand miles an hour? Maybe four thousand miles an hour. And outside the Earth's atmosphere, a good deal faster. Well, how could they make a landing? Well, there are several ways to reduce landing speed. You see, the basic problem is to overcome the inertia and... Keep going, mister. He was falling for it. <laughs> Fake news. Thank you, Mrs. Robinson. I'm sure we've all shared your fears during the past few days. I see a gentleman here with his little boy. What do you think of the spaceship, son? It's the biggest spaceship I ever saw. <laughs> and you, sir. Mind telling us your name? My name is Carpenter. Would you care to say a few words, Mr. Carpenter? I suppose you're just as scared as the rest of us. In a different way, perhaps. I am fearful when I see people substituting fear for reason. In fact, uh, I would like... Thank you, Mr. Carpenter. Th thank you very much. I see another gentleman over here in the crowd. That doesn't fit my narrative, sir. Space Matty Lutz Police. Army put in charge. Read all about it. Space Matty Lutz Police. Extra, extra. Get your paper here. That looks like a comfortable photo. Army put in charge. Extra, extra. You think they'll ever find him? I don't know, Bobby. I'm inclined to doubt it. Mr. Carpenter, what does inertia mean? Inertia is the property of matter by which it remains in uniform motion unless acted upon by external force. Oh. Oh. I'll Makes that's perfect just sense. Mr. Barnhart talks. Bobby, I have an idea. Let's go and see Professor Barnhart and find out how he talks. You're kidding, aren't you? Wouldn't you like to meet him? Well, sure, I would, but uh, I bet you'd be scared. Maybe we can scare him more than he can scare us. I like you, Mr. Carpenter. You're a real screwball. Uh. Wait. Extra, extra, spaceman. Well, wait till you I'll show you how to tie a tie appropriately, Bobby. God, why is he answered yet? He must not be home. Maybe he isn't home. <laughs> Gee, I'll bet you this is where he works. Ah, yes, math. You forgot to carry oh. the one. Oh. It ends in oi, oi. <laughs> What's that stuff on the blackboard, man? It's a problem in celestial mechanics. I'll bet he's the only one in the world that knows the answer. He doesn't know the answer. And he'll never get it that way. This is the math behind Jewish space lasers. 
probably couldn't get to see him even if he was from. <laughs> Let me show you how locks work, kid. Hey, where are you going? If he's that difficult to see, perhaps we ought to leave a calling card. <laughs> <laughs> calling card. Let me fix his math and take a crap on his desk. Perfect. <laughs> Did you do it wrong? He just needs a little help. What are you doing in here? Uh. How dare you write on that blackboard? Uh, wait, do you, see what do you realize that Professor has been working on that problem for weeks? He'll solve it in no time now. How did you get in here, and what do you want? He came to see Professor Barnhart. Well, he's not here, and he won't be back till this evening. I can write perfect English. I think you'd better leave now. Would you give this to the Professor? I think he wants to talk to me. Let's just go back out through the window we came in. Harvard Street. <laughs> <laughs> Do you like apples? I wouldn't erase that. The professor needs it very badly. I'm not gonna lie, I dig the shine off that car. <laughs> he's a little too old to be Batman, but Bobby's about right for Robin. Mr. Carpenter, come home yet? Yeah, he's right inside. Tell him I'd like to see him. Okay, come on in. Your name, Carpenter? Yes. Oh, I suppose Professor Barnhart's been looking for me. I've been looking for you all afternoon. Thank you. Well, 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 well. It was a wonderful day. You still haven't answered my question. You know how I feel, Tom. But I just want to think it over. The boss is leaving for Chicago tomorrow. If I could tell him that I was getting married and had two dependents. <laughs> You're a good salesman. But I've got to think about it. A good insurance salesman wouldn't give you time to think about it. He just wants to Nine. close the Nine. deal. Sex is for closers. ABC, <laughs> always be closing. <laughs> Hi, Mom. You guys have steak knives. Good evening, Mr. Carpenter. Good evening. Uh, Mrs. Benson, this is Mr. Brady. How do you do? How do you do? Mr. Brady's a government agent. story agent. of a man named Brady. Have a nice day, dear. We had a swell time, didn't we, Mr. Carpenter? Yes, we did. We went to the movies and had some ice cream cones, and then we went to see Daddy. I don't know how to thank you. <laughs> I enjoyed every minute of it. I love we, seeing uh, your dead husband. Get going, Mr. Carpenter. Oh, gee. You didn't finish your story. I'll finish it tomorrow. Good night, Bobby. Uh -huh. Good night. Good night. He's so rugged and handsome. Come on, Sploosh. Dear. Time to go to bed. <laughs> Mommy needs some alone time. Why did Mr. Carpenter have to go with Mr. Brady? I don't know. Maybe it was a mistake. Oh. We sure had fun today. We saw the spaceship. And you want to see Professor Barnhart? Professor Barnhart? Yeah, sure. Mom, do I have to go to school tomorrow? Yes, of course, dear. Gee. Grandpa Rick to wants to take Mr. me on Carpenter an adventure. <laughs> gonna need to get him way up there, Morty. <laughs> oh, come in. The professor's in his study. Thank you. 
This is the man you wanted to see, Professor. Thank you, Captain. I'll wait outside. It's like George Costanza's father. <laughs> mm -hmm. You wrote this? It was a clumsy way to introduce myself. But I understand you're a difficult man to see. Mr. Stiller. I thought you'd have the solution by this time. <laughs> Not yet. That's why I wanted to see you. All you have to do now is to substitute this expression at this point. Yes, that will reproduce the first order term. But what about the effect of the other terms? Almost negligible. With variation of parameters, this is the answer. How can you be so sure? Have you tested this theory? I find it works well enough to get me from one planet to another. I am glad to. You're glad to what? I spent two days at your Walter Reed you. Hospital. <laughs> room 309. My doctor's name was Major White. Now, if you are not interested or if you intend to turn me over to your army, we needn't waste any more time. You may go now, Captain. Please thank General Cutler and tell him, tell him that I know this gentleman. You have faith, Doug Professor Klatu. Barnhart. It isn't faith that makes good science, Mr. Klatko. It's curiosity. Sit down, please. There are several thousand questions I'd like to ask you. I would like to explain something of my mission here. That it's the 23 flavors question. of Dr. Pepper. We know from scientific observation that How your planet has discovered a rudimentary kind of atomic chicken. energy. You see, that's the joke. There's actually 13. We also know that you're 13. experimenting with rockets. Yes, that is true. So long as you were limited to fighting among yourselves with your primitive tanks and aircraft, we were unconcerned. But soon, one of your nations will apply atomic energy to spaceships. That will create a threat to the peace and security of other planets. That, of course, we cannot tolerate. Are we going to set sunlight on fire? What exactly is the nature of your mission, <laughs> Mr. Tattoo? I came here to warn you that by threatening danger, your planet faces danger. Very grave danger. I'm prepared, however, to offer a solution. Would you care to be more specific? What You're going to blow yourselves up. To all concerned. It is too important to be entrusted to any individual. See, sunlight is like gasoline. <laughs> <laughs> what you do is you take this rag. I this gather is space. that your efforts on the official level were not entirely successful. I come to you as a last resort, and I confess my patience is wearing thin. Must I take drastic action in order to get a hearing? What, what sort of action do you mean? Violent action, since that seems to be the only thing your people understand. Leveling New York City, uh -huh. or sinking the Rock of Gibraltar? Would you be willing to meet with the group of scientists I'm calling together? How about nuking Perhaps you could explain your mission mm -hmm. to them, that? and they, in turn, could present it to their various peoples. That's why I came to see you. It is not enough to have men of science. We scientists are too often ignored or misunderstood. Oh, we must get Wait leaders get from every field, <laughs> the finest minds in the world. I leave that in your hands. He wants One to thing, see, Mr. Karen wants to see the manager of Earth. Suppose this group <laughs> should reject your proposals. What is the alternative? I'm afraid there is no alternative. Karen. In such a case, the planet Karen. Earth would be eliminated. Such power exists? I assure you, such power exists. You don't know who you're talking to. <laughs> the people who come to the meeting must be made to realize this. They must understand what is at stake. You mentioned a demonstration of force. Yes. Would such a demonstration be possible before the meeting? Yes, of course. Something that would dramatize for them and for their people the seriousness of the situation. Something that would affect the entire planet. That can easily be arranged. I Have you ever heard of the city of Hiroshima? Or destroy anything. Why don't you leave it to me? I'll think of something. Maybe a little demonstration. Something dramatic, but not destructive. That's quite an interesting problem. Would the day after tomorrow be all right? Say about noon. Wonder if he can make the Earth stand still. Ah! Uh, uh, <laughs> uh, uh, he said it. He said it. 
no, I'm just guessing. Please. I'm just guessing. FBI, I'm I haven't seen it. Rummy? Uh, <laughs> Rummy? Take a hand, Mr. Covenant. Unfortunately, they were playing bridge. Oh. <laughs> oh, thanks, we <laughs> no, thanks. Nancy had been hitting the scotch hard that night. Are you going out there? Yeah, Actually, Tom's she's been me drinking up. rum. Well, personally, Swaggity. I wouldn't go out after dark these days. But uh, then I'm not courting, Swaggity. am I? Did... Oh, oh, Mr. Carpenter. You sure gave me a start. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, did. <laughs> Everyone seems so... Jittery is the word. Bobby's the only person I know who isn't jittery. Well, he has his homework to keep him occupied. He's a fine boy, Mrs. Benson. Naturally, I think so. Warm, friendly, intelligent. Mr. Carpenter. Emphasis on the warm, about 98.6. This is none of my business. But why did that man come here last night? Oh, well, they just wanted to ask me a few questions. Bobby and I tried to see Professor Barnhart in the afternoon. He wasn't in. Apparently, they thought I was looking for secrets of some kind. Excuse me. What's this? Reader's Digest. Hello. Hello. Are you ready? Well, I will be in a minute. The picture starts at 8.50. I was just talking to Mr. Carpenter. Well, I hope Mr. Carpenter won't think I'm intruding. Shh. What? Good evening. Excuse me, I was just going up to my room. Good night, Mr. Carpenter. Have a good time, both of you. Thank you. Thank you. Why don't you wait in here while I get my things? Tom, that was awful. I'm sorry, I guess I'm just tired of hearing about Mr. Carpenter. Tom. I don't like the way he's attached himself to you and Bobby. After all, what do you know about him? Well, he's... I'll go get my things. Hung like a horse. Handsome and <laughs> eight feet tall and... You know what they say about big feet. He's also not a jackass to me. Hint, hint. Always a bonus. <laughs> Budget fill All you Hartman. have to remember is first find the common denominator and then divide. Thanks, Mr. Carpenter. I'll say goodnight again. Mr. Carpenter. I... Take good night. Good night, Mr. Benson. It's Ms. Go to bed now, darling. You can finish that in the morning. Okay. <laughs> Neat! Bobby, I think it would be better if we didn't see quite so much of Mr. Carpenter. Gee, why, Mom? He's my best friend. Gee Willikers. He's awful good in arithmetic. He even helps Professor Barnhart. Did you and Mr. Carpenter really go see Professor Barnhart? Sure we did. He wasn't there, but we went to see him. And Mr. Carpenter showed him how to do his arithmetic. Mom? Is putting two and Something two wrong with Mr. Carpenter? What do you mean, dear? She's On account of last five. night. <laughs> you think he's a bank robber? Or a, or a gangster, maybe? No, dear, of course not. He's a very nice man. I just think that he might prefer to be left alone, that's all. And you go to bed and forget about it. Good night, darling. Good night. You remember what you did with Daddy? Just do Mom? that. Why would he want to be left alone? Don't forget to brush your teeth. That's a stupid answer. <laughs> <laughs> what does brushing my teeth have to do with this? I was thinking maybe Mr. Carpenter would be a trade-up. Yeah. All right, I'm just going to get my porn out from under the bed. And then the train goes into the tunnel. <laughs> over and over again. And then it backs up. <laughs> then it goes in. <laughs> Bobby, do you have plans? Morning. Right? Morning, you gotta come with me. We're gonna get your little girlfriend, Jessica. <laughs> it's a real Boy Scout one. Fine. Here, all you gotta do is push up on it, see? Oh. What do you need it for? I, uh, um, the light in my room went out. Oh. I must tell you sometime about another kind of train kind that doesn't need any tracks. Really? Really. Remind me in the morning, I'll tell you all about it's called the car. Okay. <laughs> it's amazing. Have you ever heard of gasoline, kid? It's called It's like sunlight. Amtrak. <laughs> no tracks. 
What's that called? Monorail! Nobody's gonna pick up the Simpsons reference there? Yep, we picked it up. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Joe scale fuckery. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Model train jokes. I like be a first for us. It is. I choo choo choose you. <laughs> no. God, is there any place you can get a burrito at this hour? Never seen Boy, again. Brad. Damn it, Bobby. Not gonna lie, if I turn around and saw that old kid walking behind me like that, I'd probably freak the fuck out. <laughs> yep. <laughs> Play with us. Tight security guys. Yep. Ooh, two Jeeps. That's a pickup line at that point. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> hey, kid, ever heard of the game Rocket League? Sure was a swell save. Morse code. This futuristic robot communicates with flashes of light of Morse code. <laughs> You know what that is in Morse code. <laughs> this episode of Leave It to Beaver is pretty dark. <laughs> oh, God Emperor looked it up for us. It's just try it, meat bags. <laughs> I think it's bite my shiny metal ass. Oh, he could be Bender. Yeah, this is the original, uh, the original Bender. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Listen, if you listen really closely, you can hear insert girder. He had a Latin accent. Bender bending Rodriguez, anyone? Hey guys. <laughs> Look what I can I do. I just want a hug. Tell me about oh. the rabbit's joke. <laughs> <laughs> guys had one job. Three guards for the whole spacecraft. Well, they did put a nice corrugated wall around it. That's true. Beep, beep. Not smart, Bobby. <laughs> Gord gets real twitchy around kids. Training order thing. Now he can't park his spaceship within 300 feet of a school. <laughs> Whoops! I better not run across this brightly lit field. Let's see, the 87 Chateau de Marmont. 
that seems like a good choice. <laughs> He's never going to find his way out of that Ikea. <laughs> starting to look like Minority Report up in here. <laughs> it's just a giant theremin. <laughs> <laughs> Oh shit, he's speaking in tongues. I need an old priest and a young priest. Boy, I sure wish I could have gone on the flying saucer. Mr. Carpenter's up past curfew. Bobby, what are you doing up at this hour? I couldn't sleep, Mom. I had to tell you. Tell me what? Well, after you left, I followed Mr. Carpenter. And where do you think he went? Right into the spaceship. Oh, now, Bobby, wait a minute. Honest, Mom, I saw him. It opened up and he walked right in. And that big iron fellow was walking around, too. Bobby, you've been dreaming again. No, I See, haven't, Mom. I thought she was going to say Honest, drinking. I, I promise you, I saw him. <laughs> Have you been getting into the swaggity again, this, Bobby? Bobby? On the lawn, down at the mall. In that place with the soldiers out in front. Where were the soldiers all this time? Well, that big iron guy grabbed him and knocked him out. I like Mr. Carpenter, Mom. I'm kind of scared. Oh, don't be frightened, darling. It was only a bad dream. Yeah, we'll Swaggy to Junior Rat Juice. Tom, will you ask Mr. Carpenter to come down for a minute? Sure. He's in the room next to mine. Okay. Now, think back hard. You didn't follow Mr. Carpenter at all, did you? You hadn't even been out of the house. Yes, I have. Now, you didn't really see a spaceship. Mom's gaslighting. <laughs> I'd never call you a liar. Could you come back in 20 minutes? I was practicing my mantra. Is this a sock? Man, his hands were dirty. Well, nobody's going to notice this missing. Yoink. I haven't had a chance to make a ring for you yet, but uh, what do you say? He's not there, but look what I found in his room. Is it real? Well, it looks real to me. Well, Mr. Carpenter's got lots of diamonds. He gave me a couple of them. Bobby, you weren't going to say gave anything. to you? No, not exactly. I gave him two dollars. This doesn't make sense. I want my two. Dollars. I think the guy's a crook. I never did trust him. <laughs> Gee, Mom, you think maybe he's a diamond smuggler? Come on, darling. You're going up to bed now. I wonder if we ought to call. Bobby and I have had enough excitement for tonight. Do you think it's all right for you to stay here? Yeah, I've got a good lock on my door. Bobby's going to sleep in my room tonight. Okay. The man staying Come here on doesn't now. have a key. Up to bed with you. Bobby, your shoes are soaking. Yeah, the grass was kind of wet. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> Fade to black. I'm going now, Racist. Helen. All right. Doing great. Let me pull the whiskey out of my drawer here. It's time to party. Oh, yeah. Why were Bobby's shoes wet? Hello. The ground was completely dry. May I see dry. you for a minute? Uh, sploosh. Well, I'm just going to lunch. May I walk out with you? Well... Mrs. Benson speaking. We've been trying to reach you about your oh, home's hello. extended warranty. I'm at Bleakers to get an appraisal <laughs> on that diamond. I thought we might have lunch together. Can I talk to you later? Oh, that'll be fine. Bye. <laughs> Sploosh. I saw Bobby this morning before he went to school. Yes? I'd like to know what he told you last night. I <laughs> really didn't pay much attention. Bobby has such an active imagination. Did you believe what he told you? I have a reason for asking this. A very important reason. There's another elevator we can use. It's a service elevator. Nobody uses it. It smells like swaggity and shame. 
Living it up when I'm going down. <laughs> what is it you want? Before I ask you to be honest with me, perhaps I should be completely honest with you. What happened? Plot device! What time is it? Just 12. We shall be here for a little while. About 30 minutes. <laughs> well, we can try pushing the other button. I only need the first two. Why not? You see, the electricity has been neutralized all over the world. Bobby was telling the truth, wasn't he? Yes. Because the entire world is London and New York City. It's that spaceman. That's what it is. It's the spaceman. Oh, hey. <laughs> well, maybe the Spice Girls are actually the Space Girls. Stopping wet, they're gonna spoil. Just keep pulling. Even the cows stopped producing milk. <laughs> He's got a crank engine. Does that require, does that require electricity? Yeah, that's, that's Thanks. I am enjoying it right here. The whole city has stopped. People are running around like ants. What a brilliant idea. I never would have thought of it. What about the people who are coming to the meeting tonight? Have they all arrived? Yes, here's the list. And I talked to most of them on the phone this morning. They're all very curious about the meeting. Good. Did you speak to our friend, Mr. Carpenter? He'll be there at 8.30. Tell me, Hilda. Does all this frighten you? Does it make you feel insecure? Yes, sir, it certainly does. <laughs> That's good, Hilda. Just Hilda, checking, I'm no glad. reason. Good, good. I'm glad you feel insecure. As far as we can tell, all power's been cut off everywhere, with a few exceptions. And even these exceptions are remarkable. Hospitals, planes in flight, that sort of thing. I wish I could give Plot you more device. information, but as you know, all communications are out. Telephones, radio, cable. Everything. Although I was able to type onto this piece of paper. Gentlemen, I can't tell you the president is prepared to Will declare Ferrell? a state of national emergency. <laughs> Wait, I got you. Oh, Eleanor, <laughs> did you call the electrician? I tried, Mr. Bleeker, but the phone doesn't work either. Well, call the phone company. But the With phone what? doesn't work. <laughs> Is it worth anything? I have never seen such a stone in all my life. Will you please tell me where it came from? That's what I want you to tell me. But there are no diamonds like this any place in the world that I know of. Are you sure of that? Would you like to sell it? No. No, thanks. I, I give you a very good price. Thank you, no. I've already told you more than I told Professor Beinhardt because, in a sense, my life is in your hands. Also I thought if you knew the facts, you'd appreciate <laughs> the importance of my not being Because the power of boners is better than anything. Of course. Of course I do. You <laughs> hold great hope for this meeting. I can see no other hope for your planet. If this meeting should fail, then I'm afraid there is no hope. It must be 12.30. <laughs> yes. But everybody's watches still worked. Yes, honk your horns. Where you go? 
going now? Back to the boarding house. I'll be safe there for the afternoon. I can keep an eye on Bobby. He's the only other person who knows anything about no, what I... No, wait I'm... a minute. There's someone else. Who? Tom. He was there last night when Bobby told me what he saw. Do you think he'd tell anyone? Yeah. Well, I think he'd talk to me first, anyway, before... Definitely. Oh, we can't take any chance. I'll get in touch with him right away to make sure. But I've got to talk to him. He's a hot-headed jackass. Well, when is he coming <laughs> back? I don't know, Mrs. Benson. He left before noon, before that awful electric business. I'm scared to death, Mrs. Benson. I... No. We're out of Lehman Pledge. He wouldn't tell me where he was going. He said it was something personal. Well, please ask him to call me the minute he gets in. Thanks. Just call his payphone. Before we start discussing plans, I want to report from Colonel Ryder. What about the robot, Colonel? Robot. When it was discovered Robots. last night that the robot had <laughs> moved, to it. <laughs> I was directed by the Joint Chiefs to find a means of immobilizing him. We accomplished that this morning by encasing him in a block of KL-93. It's a new plastic material, stronger than steel. Isn't it possibly broken out of this stuff? No, sir, we just checked on that. He's locked up tight as a drum. All right. That means we concentrate on the man. Up till now, we've agreed upon the desirability of capturing this man alive. We can no longer afford to be so particular. We'll get him. Alive, if possible. But we must get Dead him. likely. Is that clear? No aids owner on foreclosure. Traffic toll in the eye. Court seeks adjournment. <laughs> Turning radius on these cars. Honest, Mary, I'm so scared it's I can't impressive. sit still. I'd like to run someplace, but I don't know where to go. Bye now. <laughs> Margaret, call the Pentagon. Find out who's in charge of this spaceman business. Whoever it is, I want to talk to him. Mrs. Benson's been trying to get you all afternoon. She says it's important. Get this other call first. Plot point. Oh, Mrs. Benson, he just walked in. Oh, fine. Are you nervous, too? Yes, I am, Margaret. Oh, Helen, come on in. Tom, I've been trying to get you all afternoon. I have some terrific news about your friend, Mr. Carpenter. What about him? Helen, he's the man from the spaceship. I had that diamond checked at three different places. Nobody's ever seen a stone like that. After what Bobby told us, that's enough for me. Why is it nobody knows anything about him? Why hasn't he got any money? All right, Tom, it's true. I know it's true. You, how do you know? Never mind about that. You've got to promise me you won't say a word to anybody. Are you crazy after what happened today? You don't understand. You don't realize how important this is. Important? Of course it's important. The point is we can do something about it. Well, that's what I'm trying to tell you. We mustn't do anything about it. Believe me, Tom, I know what I'm talking about. He's a menace to the whole world. It's our duty to turn him But he in. isn't a menace. He told me why he came here. He took. He told you? Oh, don't be silly, honey, just because you like the guy. <laughs> you realize, of course, what this would mean to us. I could write my own ticket. I'd be the biggest man in the country. Is that what you're thinking about? Why not? Somebody's got to get rid of him. I'm not going to let you do it. Yes? Believe me, Tom, this is the most important What's his name, in Margaret? General Cutler. Yes. Oh, all right, I'll hold on. Tom, you mustn't. You don't know what you're doing. It isn't just you and Mr. Carpenter. The rest of the world is involved. I don't care about the rest of the world. I care about me and my payday. You'll feel different when you see my picture in the papers. I feel different right now. You wait and see. You're going to marry a big hero. I'm not going to marry anybody. <laughs> Helen, I... Hello, General Cutler. No, I don't... No, I don't want to speak to his aide. I want to speak to the general. Tell him it's about the spaceman. Call the general and save some time. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> That's right, General. I hate general. how funny That's that was. Staying. Yes, of course I'm sure. Thank you very much, Mr. Stevens. I want to talk to you further, but I haven't time now. <laughs> Deploy all Zone 5 units according to Plan B, immediately. Blowing everything up? Why wasn't that Plan A, sir? Well, it takes forever to dial a 1-900 number on a rotary phone there, uh, boys and bigger. <laughs> Thank you. 
Guys, can I just say that this is a fantastic movie? Yeah, it's a really good movie. This is a really, really good movie. The riffability is not strong on this one. No, it's I, really not. But... Baker hit it on the head. Like it's fun to watch. So, I'm yeah. Watching it. <laughs> also, I have a special guest. Come on, let's make it. Uh, oh, Sammy. Attention, all units. Attention all units. When deployed according to Plan Baker, maintain station and remain on radio alert until further orders. Do a barrel roll. This movie brought to you by the U.S. Army. needs about 90% more Michael Bay in it. <laughs> Randomly exploding jeeps. Baba Spoon! Plan B for boarding house. Ah! That was what plan 9 was. I'm sure Barnhart can arrange to hide me until the meeting. Where's the meeting going to be? At the ship. Thank you, son. We're going to make you an honorary general for this kid. Attention zone five. Attention zone five. Yellow cab moving north on 14th Street from and Harvard Street. Only. <laughs> Man and woman in back seat. Get license number and report. Because there's only going to be one cab in all of New York City with a man and a woman in it. That's the one. Right. Attention Zone 5. License number of target vehicle is H0012. Oh, hey. DC, but not anyway. I'm like sorry, DC. Who 12? Who 12? Who? Attention Zone 5. Attention Zone 5. A report when target vehicle passes your position. There goes one. There goes another, and another, and another. It's only a few blocks to Barnard. I'm worried about Gort. I'm afraid of what he might do if anything should happen to me. Gort, but he's a robot. Without you, what could he do? There's Everything no limit to what he could do. He could destroy the Earth. If anything should happen to me, you must go to Gort. You must say these words. Go to Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. Please repeat that. Klaatu, Barada, Nikto. Nikto. You must remember those words. Nickel. <laughs> Fuck, what were those words? Barada. What I'm saying is, <laughs> you gotta stop. Yellow cab, license number H0012, heading west on 15th Street at Treasury Place. The target vehicle is turning west into Massachusetts Avenue. Yellow cab heading northwest at Columbia Road in Connecticut. Repeat, yellow cab heading northwest at Columbia Road in Connecticut. Looks like they stopped off at a church's Attention chicken, sir. Units. Northwest area, zone five. Mm. Block off all streets intersecting Connecticut Avenue on a line from Wisconsin to the park. Yeah. All vehicles close in. Let's go. This is not going to end well. Cars accelerating. Excitement. It's not a yellow cab, that's a gray cab. I just wanted to say, give me some sugar, baby. <laughs> <laughs> 
right hey, here. What's going on here? Heads. This is my boomstick. Drive. Well, they drove all the way to Chicago. Well, they travel over 4,000 miles. Okay. Ow! We throw the shoe, honestly. Get that message to God right away. What was it again? Matsu. Clux, Lima, file cabinet. I don't remember. You shot me in the other arm. No loitering. thought out. Sorry. I'm so sorry. I've been holding that for a while. Sorry. If your plastic carbonite bath lasts longer than four hours. It's all right. It was just a couple of privates. They've got plenty of those to go around. Oh, uh, he shot him right in the privates. Wap <laughs> <laughs> wap. Hello. I'm gonna go up there and I'm gonna tell that robot a thing or two. Just wait till he can hear me play the theremin. Your manager sent me. Crotch is glowing. <laughs> You're too young. To oh, thank you so much for the hundred bits, but girl. <laughs> oh, thank you. I love a big heart, man. Coffee maker, loop top. Perforated metal. Fuck. Why didn't she walk up to him all strong like and now she's scared of him? Are those seats arranged like a school classroom? Paging Dr. Wilhelm. into my eyes. How do I wink with this visor? Part two. Marauder. Nick Toe. Part two. Marauder. Nick Toe. <laughs> Cover button. Braddock. Nipples. been instructed to deliver you to my bedroom. Damn it, Klaatu. You got me again. Pleasure bot 9000 online. Please play me a song on the theremin. <laughs> Please undress slowly. <laughs> I put the cock in cockpit. 
I hate you. <laughs> I call this song derezzed. I'm available for all your welding needs. There you go. That was your joke. I just repurposed it. We will steal the joke and make it our own. Good job, Piper. No. You may ask yourself, why is a robot wearing briefs? <laughs> <laughs> you will no longer be asking yourself that question after you smell what I left. It's to cover my nuts. <laughs> Nut. Nut. <laughs> it's to cover my... Nut. From now on, I'm not going to speak. That's yes, what the sir. robot said. Yes, we have the body here now, locked in a cell. There's locked no question about hell? it, General. He's dead, all right. <laughs> we I checked him for a pulse. He didn't have one. I'll be right there, sir. Bring in a squad of men, Lieutenant. Place a guard around that cell. Yes, sir. Captain, don't let anyone guard in or out of the building. Yes, sir. What's that going to do? Come along. It's going to keep everything <laughs> in position. <laughs> Bender, bend it's these bars. Dutch oven. <laughs> I will be able to walk you through this without bumping your noggin. My mind. Meanwhile, let the nipple of justice. I tried to make that joke. Nobody listened. <laughs> uh, he smells dead. Has the brick and mortis set in on the, you know, that part? <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> I'm not proud of that joke. <laughs> we just have to microwave him on high for 30 seconds. He'll taste just the same. Well, yeah, good job. We shot someone who wasn't white and American. <laughs> Professor Barnhart? Yes? I'm very sorry, but I have to ask you to call off this meeting. Call it off? But I had permission from the army. I know you did, sir. But the robot's on the loose now, and it's not safe around here. You'll have to get your people out of this area. Mm. Well, we almost got him back to body temperature. <laughs> and on this, we can even rotisserie. Fuck, he's gonna blow! With the Ronco Kio rehydrate matic you just set it and forget it. <laughs> It'd be awesome if you it up after it came back to life. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry! Sorry! my creation it's alive <laughs> did I drink too much and pass out again god I gotta stop drinking swaggity Abby normal ow 
this other dude's suit. <laughs> I've got this pain in my chest. Not here. Hello? Not here. Right here. <laughs> I thought you were. I was. Dead. You mean. He has the power of life and death? No. That power is reserved to the Almighty Spirit. This technique, in some cases, does he have the power of dry cleaning? <laughs> but you should alone. see what he can do with carpets. Because <laughs> that's gross. That no one <laughs> have you ever seen space jizz? It gets everywhere. Oh my god! <laughs> I'm glad I sent my daughter away. <laughs> I checked before I made the joke. <laughs> You know, he didn't even bother Under to say hi or thank you to Gord. The army people have asked us to leave. And since their concern is for our safety, I can do nothing but suggest that we comply. Mike, drop. your hands in the air and wave them like you just don't care. Robot rock. We're up all night to get some. <laughs> We're up all night to get lucky. Are they not at all suspicious? I am of leaving the soon. Walked out of there? And you will forgive me if I speak bluntly. The universe grows smaller every day. And Except the threat of aggression expanding. by any group, anywhere, can no longer be tolerated. There must be security for all, or no one is secure. Now, this does not mean giving up any freedom, except the freedom to act irresponsibly. Your ancestors knew this when they made laws to govern themselves and hired policemen to enforce them. We of the other planets have long accepted this principle. We have an organization for the mutual protection of all planets and for the complete elimination of aggression. The test of any such higher authority is, of course, the police force that supports it. For our policemen, we created a race of robots. Robots. Their function is to patrol the planets in spaceships like this one and, ben and preserve the peace. In matters of aggression, we have given them absolute power over us. This power cannot be revoked. At the first sign of violence, they act automatically against the aggressor. The penalty for provoking their action is too terrible to risk. The result is we live in peace. Without arms or armies, and, and fear. secure yeah, in the fear. knowledge that we are free from aggression and war. That's called fear. Like, free to like pursue more arms. profitable enterprises. Now, we do not pretend to have achieved perfection. But we do have a system. And it works. Country I game. came here to give you these facts. It is no concern of ours how you run your own planet. But if you threaten to extend your violence, this earth of yours will be reduced to a burned out cinder. Okay, sparkles. sparkles. Your choice is simple. Join us and or live in die. peace. Or pursue your present course and face obliteration. We shall be waiting for your answer. The decision rests with you. Well, we're fucked. <laughs> <laughs> we can all agree, right? Yeah. Everyone? Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, except for maybe Jim. Jim's an asshole. God, Moringa. We're going to go drop a fire new album. combination of pleats and sparkles. It really is. And the weird donut thing around his neck. Oh, the ones. Aren't, isn't that one of those like pillows so you can sleep on a plane? 
it, it inflates. Yeah. She packed my bags. Pre flight. Let's all go to the lobby and get ourselves a jiffy pop. So, is this movie going to end without any decision being made? No, no, it's not. Okay, so right. this is normally where I would press a button and we would go to the wrap up screen. However, However. tonight is a little bit different. We're doing things a little differently tonight. Uh, yeah. Let's just do this really quick here. We're going to pull up a little thing from uh, from our friend Aaron here. Yeah. So we have uh, entries into uh, into the uh, the drawing here for a hat, uh, which Josh has there. This is the hat that we signed last week. Um, Two weeks ago. I don't think we had any more. I know. I'm sorry. The last time we were together, I'll put it that way. Uh, and uh, so, thank yeah, you, Retro. Appreciate here. that. Thank you so much. We we currently have, uh, I think we currently have ten entries. Just you'll note here the detail. Uh, it was so signed have, with the finest knockoff sharpie. Yep. It, it, this is your last chance. If anybody else wants to, yeah. To if get anybody's wanted to get we in, we only you have ten entries now. here, so there's a one in ten shot here right now. But it's another road dog, Fadence, Wordenaz, Magnus, Y2 Cranker, Abish and Her Brawl, The Chuck Goober Show, KJMB, <laughs> PF Janky, and Art Splunge. Mm -hmm. I think we've decided is how we want to see it. I don't yep. see any other subscriptions Splunge. coming in, so all right. I think we're ready. I'm All right, well, so let's go to the roll the here. dice here. I'm gonna hit drawing, and then there's one but more button. Uh, Quick <laughs> drawing with no effects. Start final drawing now. Survey. And it's been successfully six. completed. So um, thanks everybody for watching. Um, <laughs> we will let you know. No, we'll be sure to <laughs> give you the to results, results of this next week. It's a bish and her a brawl. A bish and her brawl. Hey. They win. All That's right, fine. fantastic. Uh, so we'll we'll get in touch with them and uh, send them the the swaggity hat. Um, this is the culmination of I think thirty four months of advertising that once we got to twenty five subscribers, <laughs> we were going to draw this hat. Forty eight months. Forty eight months actually. Here, uh, here we are. Been, it's been a hot minute. You know, we've been aging it like we have uh, children. You know, it's until it gets <laughs> to about five, you go by months. We have. Um, but before before we move on, I want to ask everybody. We're so we're considering doing another live event uh, in Kansas City, and we're talking with the theater right now on what that's going to look like and what dates we have. Um, but I wanted to get get a feel if you guys have a movie that you think would be riffable and fun to watch uh, for a live uh, for a live show. I'd love to get your thoughts on that. If you'll shoot it to admin at bmoviebonfire dot com, um, would love to get your thoughts on that. Um, we're tossing around maybe Monos, maybe in four K. We'll see. 4K uh, monos. We're tossing oh. around. Uh, right? You can see the, the individual stains on the couch. If we do um, monos in 4K, we're going to need... Red left. We're going to need a round of Malort. Oh, yeah. Oh, no, I, I I agree with this. We're going to buy I the movie theater it. another bottle of, of Terrible liquor, terrible, terrible liquor that they, terrible, terrible liquor that they, <laughs> will, <laughs> that they will never sell. Uh, but I do have to give a shout out to uh, to Screenland Armor. They were great, and uh, they really, we were. really enjoyed uh, working with them. And uh, the Jacob and the team there uh, were fantastic. Um, they are going to let us come back, and uh, so so we're looking forward to doing that and building an audience locally as well as online, and uh, trying to figure out how the audio works when we do that. But uh, what, really what makes, it. It, it really good. added something different to the show. It really did. Yeah, it, it definitely and not just uh, an echo. <laughs> it did. It did a lot of that. Uh, what we we learned some lessons. We learned some lessons. <laughs> we learned that, that KGMB thinks that Kyle is actually pretty funny. Uh, I don't know it, how many times it, she laughed at his jokes. I was, I, I was nobody laughs at my jokes. I'm I'm perplexed by this. Nobody she laughs does. at my jokes. She thinks, and she'll defend it. She's like, no, he's really funny. <laughs> 
But uh, anyway, that was great. A couple of things I want to say real quick. Uh, Pinball Girl 7 gave us 100 bits. If you're still here, thank you for that. We appreciate that during the show. It's awesome. And also, my family and I watched The Burbs this weekend, and Dick so Miller good. was in it. And this B-movie bonfire thing has ruined me because I was like, oh, it's Dick Miller. And he was like on screen for like half a second and nobody cared. And they were like, what is wrong with you? And I'm hey, like, you know Miller. what? When, when you sent He's me the screenshot, movie. the first thing I did, it's Dick Miller. Yeah. <laughs> so, so I've been ruined yeah. right along with you, my friend. I'm right there with you. You are a great audience, KJMB. You definitely uh, are. Thank you so much. That's true. Thank you. Um, so that's all my updates. I don't know if you guys have updates too. But those, uh, those are mine. Next week, we're going to be doing the uh, a film noir piece called Detour. Yeah, uh, Detour. That's officially all I know about this movie. <laughs> yeah. you, found, you found it, so we have no idea. Well, we'll, all righty. We'll so uh, until next week, my guys, uh, thank you so much for hanging out with us. We really appreciate each and every one of you. Congratulations Thanks, to Ambition Her Brawl for the signed swaggity hat. We'll get in touch with you to get that sent out to you. But until then, we'll see you guys next week. Same time, same see place for Detour. Much love. We'll see you then. Do we get the outro right. music this time? No, I didn't because I'm stupid oh. and bad at life. Oh, Hang on a second. Oh, Can we pad this out for like another 20 seconds? Probably. <laughs> no. Hey, guys, dance. We're not dance, good at something. filling space with random talking. I just want to <clears> fly. <throat> I got nothing. What? What? I, what, what, what was what? that? I, I, I tried to fill space. I, I didn't oh. say I was good at it. Yeah, so admin at bmoviebonfire.com. Send us an email. Let us know what movies we should do live and otherwise. Because um, otherwise, it's just a Google search by Kyle over there. Uh, That's what I do. Or Josh saying, oh, I saw this movie. <laughs> and it's, 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 it's gloriously terrible. <laughs> this was so, a great movie, though. It, it was really good. It, I really <clears> loved this riff one. On. <clears throat> yeah, it really was hard to riff on. But I yeah. think next week's movie will be a little bit easier from what, I'm, uh, from what I've read. So until then, guys. Take care. We'll see you next week. All right. Thanks, everybody. Have a good one.